So let's talk about turntables. Definitely one of my favorite subjects. I'm one of those people that never quit buying records. I've always had a turntable since I was a little kid. I enjoy interacting with the media and that physical connection you have when you're playing a record. So that part never left me. I've had a lot of turntables over the years and turntables are different than speakers and amplifiers in my opinion in that once you place your speakers or once you place your amplifier and get it all set up, besides changing the volume, turning it off and on, even less if you have a remote, uh, you really don't interact with that piece of equipment very much. Turntables on the other hand, completely different. You know, you, you put the record on, you're picking up the tone arm, you're placing the tone arm, maybe on off switches, uh, lifting the lid. There's a lot of components to a turntable. and you kind of develop a relationship with it. It's kind of strange. It's almost like a musician with an instrument. So a lot of turntables I thought would be my forever turntable or a turntable that I really thought I would like. Once I owned them a couple weeks later, I'd find out uh, for some reason, this just isn't my turntable. I don't like the way the tone arm drop is, or I don't like the feel of the tone arm, or I don't like the way the, the lid lifts off. You know, there's a, there's a whole myriad of reasons why you might not bond with a turntable for lack of a better term but that's what also makes them fun you know i, I doubt your first turntable purchase is going to be your forever turntable purchase buying vintage is going to help you in a way in that you're not going to take that 30 percent devaluing taking it out of the box if you buy a vintage turntable at a good price you should be able to at least get out of it what you got in it whereas you know buying a new turntable uh, you take it out of the box and you're going to lose 30 percent when you go to and that's just the way everything is so or the vintage market could tank tomorrow and you could lose your ass that way but you know who knows what's going to happen and when and why So the rules for this list um, of our favorites and these aren't in order there's not a better or worse these are just our favorites um, main thing was we wanted it to be from the 60s or 70s we want something that you know if you're hunting this locally in most major cities you should be able to find one within six months or so looking on Craigslist Facebook or a local pickup on eBay um, so nothing super rare no unicorns and and nothing too extravagantly expensive I didn't want to put a, a price limit on this but I also um, there's nothing really above a grand, maybe 1200 bucks on here, I don't think. All right, and our first turntable on our list is the Acoustic Research XA and XB. Two different turntables, really separated by a tone arm lift, which the XB has, and my preference too. That's a nice upgrade, it really is. The beauty of these turntables is their simplicity. It, it really is a motor an on off switch and a tone arm the platter and the tone arm is suspended together separate from the plinth which was a really cool design to try and isolate those outside frequencies and keep those outside vibrations out so doing the doing the research for this video just to make sure my dates and stuff are all correct i did find that the museum of modern art has an xa in their museum just because of all the innovative uh, design choices they made and the sleek design uh, they are super simple they look really cool and they look really vintage um, it's about as stripped down of a turntable as you can get and I think that's what the attraction is for a lot of people and they you know they sound really good so the pros would definitely be they're super easy to work on there are a ton of mods out there for them uh, you can put different tone arms on them if you want you can get aftermarket uh, face plates for the top. There's a lot of wood plinths out there that are available. The the negatives would kind of be they're pretty lightweight. A little bit of insulation goes a long ways. I've seen people use Dynamat and Dynamat the inside of their plinths, which would help with even keeping more outside vibrations out. The other negative would be there's no anti skate, and you know that's that's a hot topic. But some people feel like anti skate isn't really an issue. Uh, I'll let you be the judge on that. Um, for those of you that have to have anti-skate, you don't want this turntable. For those of you that want to try a piece of history uh, that you can get at a decent price, 
and you definitely won't have trouble selling it if you keep it in good shape. Uh, grab an XA or an XB and uh, see what you think. Most likely you won't be disappointed. I love these turntables. Obviously that's, it's on the list. The only a bummer is usually you don't find them with good original dust covers. However, you can find several places, especially on eBay of people that uh, make aftermarket dust covers. And that's usually what I end up picking up. I use a company called JMB Audio. They've been really great over the years. I, I don't know how many dust covers I bought from them, but I've never had an issue once. So uh, check them out on eBay if you do need to get a dust cover for one of these. Thorns TD-160. These are made in Germany. These have a lot of similarities to the American Acoustic Research XAXB turntables. They really, they debuted in 1972. And there's a reason why we picked the, the 160 over some of the other turntables and that we get more of these. Uh, I know the 124 is probably a better turntable, way more expensive and also way more rare. I wanted to put turntables on this list that, that you could find pretty regularly. We see quite a few of these even in Des Moines, Iowa. So if, we, if we're seeing them here in Des Moines, Iowa, I can imagine you can find them where you're at. They're so similar with the pros and the cons of the AR. The only difference really between the AR and the Thorns, for the most part, would be the tone arm. It's definitely an upgraded tone arm. You've got, you've got anti-skate. You've got way more precision with making your VTA adjustments and everything like that. So I look at the Thorns TD-160 almost as a souped up or an upgraded Acoustic Research XA or XB turntable really similar in, in most ways. Once again, hard to find the dust covers for these in good shape. They used a hinge mechanism that liked to break. One other caveat, um, and I know this firsthand with the, the Thorns TD-160 or any Thorns for that matter, make sure if you are ever traveling with this turntable, you take the platter off. It is a very heavy platter. And I've had, I had a guy drive from Omaha to Des Moines with one of these and just that short trip, which is a couple hours, he left the platter on the turntable and it literally, the belt tension bent the spindle for the motor in just two hours. I had to send that motor to Dave at uh, Vinyl Nirvana and have him fix that motor. And it, it cost a good amount of money, but th that was the only option at the time. So. I can't stress enough, if you're ever moving one of these turntables, the XB included, any turntable for that matter, if you just want to take a little precaution, take the platter off. But especially with one of these uh, Thorn turntables, the, the motor shaft is pretty thin. They're just not going to survive a long travel with uh, bumps and jolts and all that stuff. So do yourself a favor, take that off. The other con for the TD-160, and I should have mentioned this with the AR turntables, is they use a proprietary head shell. And they can be a little bit expensive. They are repopping them, so you can get them, but getting a good original head shell, if you need to buy one, can be a little bit expensive because they're, they're unlike most other uh, head shells out there. So keep that in mind. And if you do plan to own, or you need to repair a Thorns turntable, or an AR turntable, check in with Dave at Vinyl Nirvana. I don't recommend places that I haven't used personally, but I had a great experience with them. And um, I can't imagine you having anything other than that. His reputation kind of precedes him online. So yep, Dave at Vinyl Nirvana, I believe they're in New Hampshire, but you can find information for them uh, on the internet. So. And the next one on our list is the legendary Techniques 1200 and 1100 turntables uh, made in the early 70s. I mean, this really is the turntable that's responsible for creating an entire music genre and maybe the most popular genre today. Uh, if it wasn't for the 1200 turntable, I doubt we would have hip hop or DJ scratching, any of that kind of stuff at the level it is now. These turntables have an amazing amount of torque. They break really well um, they are so robust they're so heavy they're so well built and that all comes down to the motor and all of the design choices techniques made uh, with this direct drive turntable i can't say enough good things about it in that it is such a solid turntable it had so many innovative features 
most turntable manufacturers in the DJ world have cloned this turntable almost verbatim, where you, if they didn't have a logo on it from a distance, you wouldn't be able to tell if it was a Techniques or a Pioneer or a, or a Stanton or an Audio Technica. Newmark, I believe, made one. So there's five companies right there that literally cloned this turntable and a lot of the features on it. If you are a DJ, this is almost, it's the benchmark. It, that is the turntable you use. Um, and there's a reason why. The other, the, the, one of the best things about the 1200 that I don't see really in any other turntables is the collar on the tone arm that you can adjust your VTA on the fly. So if you need to swap out a cartridge, you've got that, you've got that adjustment right there, um, which is huge and very cool for you cart swappers out there. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't overlook a 1200 uh, very cool feature that you don't see on a lot of turntables and the 1100 really is just the the home version of the the 1200 and I did want to include that because we do get those quite a bit too believe it or not maybe as many as we've had 1200s same motor same stability that 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 1100 is a tank it is I think it's 30 some pounds or something like that. I should have checked that, but um, it is stout and it's so good at isolating that platter and that tone arm that um, it really is impressive. If you can get your hands on either one of these, try it. Even if you're not a direct drive fan, try it. If you're going to try a direct drive, that's the one to try, in my opinion. Uh, Techniques SL 1100 and 1200, two incredible turntables that uh, if you're a turntable enthusiast you need to at least get your hands on one and um, see what see what all the hype's about because it's pretty impressive all right next we got the pioneer pl41 i love this beast this thing is huge it is a massive turntable um, it's wood and big and from the late 60s and japan uh, super simple again this is a belt drive it's got a lift lever for the tone arm and an on-off switch, and that's about it. It's about as simple as it gets. And if you're seeing a theme here, it's because as somebody that works on turntables, I don't like working on turntables. I like things that work when I want to use them. And the more gizmos and gadgets you get out of a turntable, the better off it is. Some of those turntables in the 80s from Denon and JVC, and they got a thousand IC chips that are controlling a bunch of stuff you're just you're going to be constantly trying to fix that thing and i don't want to fix them so the best thing is a platter a motor and a tone arm because um, i'd rather be listening to my records than working on turntables so the pros of this deck really would be the simplicity of it again i mean there's just nothing to go wrong there's a lot of parts out there for them the the cons could also be a pro in that it's so big. This turntable is huge. I don't have the dimensions on me. I should have got that. But when you see one of these in person, if you've never seen one, you're like, wow, that is a massive turntable. And if you're one of those people that wants to sit their turntable on top of the receiver, this thing isn't going to fit on a lot of receivers. You better have a big boy receiver to set this on top of, or uh, it needs to go on a table next to it. Because uh, this is this is a big turntable, but that's one of the pros in it too. It makes a uh, presence you know it's a focal point of a room and that's one of the reasons i do like it for some reason with these two the dust cover material whatever acrylic they use to make these things every time i get one of these it seems like they're in really good shape there's no cracks there's no chips there's no yellowing uh, i don't know what pioneer used for their acrylic for the pl41s but every time i get one they're spot on almost perfect so good job pioneer um, if you get a chance Grab this table, grab it, nice. And next on our list would be the Empire. We picked a 208 for this list, but there, there are several models with this within the same era and they all look very similar. But we see these the most, the Empire 208s. This is one of the most unique looking turntables on the list, I think it looks it looks like a like a 57 Chevy out of Michigan or something. It's just got that that look to it. It's kind of blocky but rounded off. Uh, I love the looks of these turntables. They are built like tanks. 
it, it that platter is nice and heavy this is a belt drive again manual super simple to work on there's not a lot to go wrong with these turntables the other good benefit is they're really easy to put a, a different tone arm on some of these turntables didn't come with tone arms and somebody that knows empire turntables would be able to tell you what model didn't have a tone arm on it uh, a couple of them i've gotten uh, did not have a factory tone arm on them purchased they had an aftermarket tone arm on it you can put almost any tone arm on here that's got a three quarter inch fitting on it and uh, super simple super easy not a lot to go wrong which is once again really nice uh, dust covers for these can be really hard to find that's i don't think i've had a dust cover for one of these once again jmb audio will make you one that'll either set over it or you know form fitted to fit on on the turntable itself but this is a really innovative turntable and this I should have probably looked the story up just to get the facts straight, but I'm pretty sure on this, the guy that owned the Empire Company was a machinist and told his engineers, he started getting into records and he said, I'm sick of all these record players out here. Build me something that actually runs and is a fluid, really nice turntable with minimum wow and flutter. And this is what they came up with. So. And the last one on our list, the only automatic, the only idler drive is the Dual 1229. These were made in Germany from 1972 to 74. These also stack records. So if you remember when you were younger, if you've seen pictures, you put four or five records on this tall spindle. And after the end of one side, the tone arm returns, drops the next record, and the tone arm goes back onto the next record to play that side. Definitely a cool feature. If you don't really care much about your records, that's kind of a hot topic, but I wouldn't do it with mine. If you do it with yours, cool. No, that's your, that's your prerogative. The other thing about this turntable that's different than the other ones on the list is it plays 78s. So if you do have those 78s around, um, this is a good way to play those. Also for the 78s, because you need a different cartridge or at least a different stylus, the Dual does have a, a removable sled system so you can hot swap uh, cartridges very easily, which makes that nice. That's also a con though, in that a lot of these, if I have a, a grounding issue or a connection issue, it's usually because of that sled. That sled, the, the contacts on there are getting to be 50 years old and they can be a little tricky. You kind of got to wiggle them into the right spot. That's one negative about this turntable. They're definitely way more complicated than any other turntable on this list by a long shot. However, they are really well built in that for an automatic turntable, this one is gonna outlast most of them, especially from the 70s and 80s. It's built with plastic gearing and arms. These are tanks made in Germany. When serviced, these are incredible playing turntables. We happen to have in Des Moines a really good friend of mine. He's become a really good friend of mine. His name's Bill, and he owns FixMyDuel.com. So we give all of our dual turntables to him to go through before we sell them, and we refer everybody that walks in the door over to Bill that has a dual turntable. There's no point in us even attempting to uh, restore one of these pieces when Bill is three miles away. Um, if you're planning on buying or repairing a dual turntable, definitely check with Bill first. He does sell them, he makes plinths, he makes uh, dust covers. So um, yeah, get a hold of Bill. He's an amazing resource for dual turntables. Some of the benefits to the dual turntable would be those automatic functions, the 78 function. You can really fine tune that tone arm to get almost any cartridge you want to sound great on it. It's a nice heavy platter. It's just a great turntable. Oh, very cool. You know what? You made it to the end of the video. It might have been a long one. I'm not sure how much we're going to edit this down, but and I appreciate everybody that's commented. I appreciate everybody that's inquired with Skylabs about having repairs and purchasing things. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we do not ship and we do not accept shipped in repairs. The truth of the matter is, is if we shipped and sold equipment online, I might as well just close down the store because I wouldn't have anything to sell locally. We barely, you know, we barely keep those shelves full as it is. And with repairs, 
you know, we're already two months behind. If we were to accept outside items um, from out of state and stuff, we'd be so buried. We'd be six months behind, a year behind, and I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So, as much as I appreciate everybody that's contacted us with, you know, looking for information on how to purchase equipment from us, unfortunately, it, it, I just don't see that happening. Um, but I do appreciate you watching the video. I do appreciate everybody that's, you know, shared and subscribed and all that good stuff. And uh, hopefully we can keep on bringing you content you enjoy. So uh, thank you and have a great day.